let you stab him. A 12 year old kid like running around with a bunch of 14 year old kids snatching handbags. In prison is nothing but, yeah, it's nothing but four walls, man. Once you figure out what you're trying to achieve, then it's like you know what you need to do to get there, innit? Hi people, and welcome back for another episode of Marvin Herbert's Nothing But The Truth podcast. As always, we've got another very special guest joining us today. Today, we're delighted to be joined by music superstar Ambush. Ambush, very, thank you very much for taking the time to be here today. Thanks for How having me. How are you doing? I'm good, good, man. How are you? Very well. Oh, fantastic, my brother. That's good. That's good. So, um, congratulations on all your success of late. Thank you very much. Very well done. So, with our guests, we'd like to go back to the start of their story, of course, so then we can look at the journey to what's brought them to the person they are today, if that's all right. Right. So, um, if possible, we'd like to go back to your childhood. If and then look where were you brought up and yeah, talk about your family setting slightly. So you always brought up in Camden. Yeah, and yeah. and how about your family set? You got brothers and sisters? Yeah, I've got two brothers. I've got two brothers. I've got a bunch of brothers and sisters, but on my dad's side, but um yeah, two uh, brothers. And so when you were growing up as a child, was it music always the thing that you were gonna do? Is that always your dream when you're older or? Um yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always um always wanted to be like an entertainer of some sort, I think. I think it's just uh, my personality. I think I've always been that, you know what I mean? Life for the party. It's a bit of an extrovert sort of character. Yeah, 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 I'm a bit of an extrovert. So, um, yeah, that was always, I'm always headed to some, something like that anyway. But, um, yeah, I love music from the start and so the rest of my family. You know, like my brother, he was like the first one got me into like rapping, rapping, like yeah, with the gram and all that. So when he was about 12, 13, whatever, he used to come through with like the old DVDs and all of that stuff. And actually my dad as well, we used to have bare CDs, like Westwood CDs and all this hip hop stuff. So yeah, that's the type of music I was growing up listening to. And yeah, my brother, by the time he was like 14, he was banging on the music as well, you know what I'm saying? So he had a studio in the gaff. Mm. Everyone from the ends used to come to the house. Do you know what I mean? And record with him. He used to make people pay one pound subs and that. We had a little, you know what I mean? Self and shit, you know what I'm saying? So from my young, it was that them guys for the music. No, so he's uh, sounds like he was um, sort of your main role model as such. In yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, yeah. And obviously showed you the hustling sort of thing. Yeah, no, one thousand percent, man. Big up Prezi, Buzz World. Big up Prezi for real. And did he pursue the music at all? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. He's part of the Buzz World movement. Yeah, man. Right now he's um, taking a more of a Dr. Dre seat. Do you know what I'm saying? He's got like a bit, um, a couple issues with um, with his uh, probation. So and his um his license condition, so he's not actually allowed to make, or he's not apparently he's not allowed to be in any sort of media music videos, what which um what's the what's the conditions promote any yeah which promote any sort of yeah gang or violence or drug or whatever drugs or criminal it's a, it's, it's, a, it's pretty unfair to be honest because that's like he's been in prison like for most of his adult life so those are most of the experiences he has so if he was gonna make music he would um that's the type of Thing that of he course. might be able to speak on in it, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Instead of kids that ain't done nothing speaking on it, yeah, you know I'm saying. And it's not helping people, they don't realize they're closing the door that he's trying to do the legit exactly. stuff. No, to. Exactly. So, what they think that's going to help him, that's going to exactly, push back but well, hopefully not, obviously. We don't make excuses, man, we just make progression, you know what I'm saying? He's, do you know what I mean, doing a bit of producing, a bit of engineering, just helping out all the way around the, the, the Buzzwell. Um, as well thing. But things in that in that department will change though in time once he's off his license and stuff. No, one hundred percent once he's off Cause license, yeah. Because obviously it'll be but everybody's on a different journey now. Yeah. Um everybody's doing things a lot different. So his message will be slightly different to what it may have been a few years ago. Yeah, for sure. Which will be a a, a, a benefit rather than a detriment to society, rather than because I understand why they don't let the youngsters do the video, videos or the music mm. because at the moment a lot of the youngsters is kind of glorifying and glamorizing the mm. world that I used to come from anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but the thing about him is, um, he never actually went jail for any anything like that, or anything music related or gang related. Or, do you know what I'm saying? So, so there was there's no there's no. Like I didn't understand why they wouldn't want him to be in any sort of music videos. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's no, there's no, there's no correlation to his crime and the music that they don't want him to make. Do you know what I'm saying? They base everything on intelligence. So everything's intelligent based with the probation and the police. Yeah. So based on the intelligence of his peers, his youngers and his mm. olders, mm. then they're gonna only assume that he's gonna be speaking of certain things and certain mm. environments or certain situations. So mm. with that in mind you can understand why they'd say 
not to sort of uh, engage in them activities. No, I do understand, but it's a bit of a, do you know what I mean? Because it's like, if you take a look at his life from a, from a, like a prison perspective, like how much of his teenage adult life he spent in prison and what, what and if they do have the intelligence about what goes on in our area and between what we're doing, this is like a whole another path he can take to take himself away from all of these negative things. You know what I'm saying? What like, what they want him to do? Get a job in the manor? No, no, but like, we know in that. Sainsbury's so some next gang members can see him and... But we know that. that. You know what I'm saying? We know... It's better to be on the move. We know where he's going, but they can only assume with the stereotypical mindset they have mm. where he's going to go. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what you got it right there. It's a stereotypical mindset yeah, that so they he, have. Yeah. That'll change in time. So he'll be back. Yeah. I have no will. doubt. So, um, going back to your childhood, can you describe what sort of child you were? Were you a troublesome one or rebellious? Or... Um, yeah, ch- child. What do you mean by child? Like, up to... What were you like at school at nine, ten years yeah, old? Yeah, no, you... I was... Do you know what it is? I'm, I'm quite intelligent, isn't it? So, I was, I'm a very smart kid. A very smart kid, but yeah, I was very naughty as well. So, God. But, do you know what I heard? And there was research that, you know, naughty kids is because, you know what I mean? They don't want to get caught up. They try to learn all the time, you know what I'm saying? So, I think that's what it was. My intelligence made me naughty. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what happened with me growing up. I was... I felt I was more advanced than my school classmates. Yeah. So, I used to do my work really quick yeah. and then get bored yeah. and then become disruptive. Yeah, this is it, disruptive. So, that's the cycle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, disruptive yeah. that you get labelled being yeah. naughty. But yeah. it doesn't mean you're naughty. It just yeah. means you're disruptive because you're bored. Yeah. I mean, we ain't... Well, that was just me anyway. I was very disruptive yeah. because I used to just get on people in class when I've finished my work I'll be like yeah, yeah, yeah no it is it is, it is, it is. So yeah. if it's the same then it's, yeah. it's it's everything we go through from certain ages usually correlates to the same sort of understandings and perceptions mm. so the naughtiest kids are usually the most intelligent mm. but we waste opportunity with ignorance yeah yeah that's you know? for sure I've seen that a lot it's all that happens on the road in that road environment, you know. Yeah, it's nothing bad. So, um, talk to me about your first brushes with the law. Did you have any brushes with the law in, during your childhood? Yeah, like, I actually got nicked quite early, you know. Um, I got arrested quite early. I think I was about 12. 12, I think. I was at, um, with the boys. I used to kind of chill with, like, the older boys. Like I said, I used to try to follow my brother around everywhere. So, yeah, I used to kind of chill with the older boys. And at the time, um... Yeah, we just used to do shit like running around, snatching purses and stupid stuff like that. So, yeah, I think we was in um, Primrose Hill or Hampstead Heath or one of the things. And, yeah, we was just a big group of boys, innit? So we were just looking for stuff to snatch type of thing. I was, I was I was basically following the crowd at, the, at that time, innit? I hadn't robbed anyone or anything. Did you, did you huh? try and impress the olders, though? Um, do you know what it is with me? I don't know if I tried to impress them. I just thought... I think it's just with everything. I just thought I could do whatever it is that you're doing. And it's like where that school wasn't that um, interesting to me, really. And then when I've, like the first time I met all these boys was literally at a fight, like on a bus, at a bus stop or on a bus or something with my brother and that. And this was the combo use, yeah, Cumberland Market um, boys, yeah. And then, yeah, I was there with my brother and they was fighting some next guy. And then my brothers got involved in it for their minute. So from there, they was like, yeah, this guy's official, man. Da, 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 da. And I was there and I was, yeah, 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 that's all you know what I'm saying. So it's, it's, it's it was like from there, we start, they, they started rolling in it. So because we moved from Bourne Estate, which is in Camden, but it's like Clark Holborn. Yeah. I lived on Bourne Estate. Did you? Yeah, I lived in, um, was it Radcliffe House? No way you lived in Radcliffe House. I'm telling you. That's Dane crazy. was conceived in Radcliffe House. Shut up, Dane was conceived in Radcliffe yeah. House. Yeah, so from, yeah, like, I, I, was born, I was born in um, Bourne Estate. And then, um, yeah, by the time I was about 12, we'd moved up to Cam, out to Camden, so where we was getting off the bus and that was in there. So yeah, we was with them anyway. They've had a fight, whatever, my brothers got involved. And then that was literally the moment that um, we met these guys, innit? So that kind of set the tone for what we're on, innit? It was exciting, innit? Fighting and that shit is exciting when you're young, innit? So yeah, from there, I was rolling around with the boys, rolling around with the boys and what they was doing on that specific day was grabbing stuff, and then yeah, they must have snapped some handbag, whatever. 
running and then obviously they're all bigger than me innit? I only had little legs running down the canal and that I tried to just slip off into some little bit and try to cool off at the restaurant police have come they've come past me I thought oh, they didn't see me then they looked like they said this kid don't fit here but grabbed me nicked me yeah that was the first time I got arrested and uh, what were your feelings then? Were you scared, obviously, just going back to the police station then? Or had you heard about your brother or older people getting nicked? And it was... Yeah, no, I don't even think my brother had been nicked by them. I don't know about the first brother. family. Yeah, um, to be honest, I was, I was more, well, I didn't do anything. I was a bit, like, confident, innit? Like, I'm not going to get, but I was a bit excited, like, I'm getting nicked, like, do you know what I mean? Like, and where I didn't do anything, I was a bit like, yeah, you get it. But then when my mum's come and that, and then she's just, like, even though, even though I've got NFA, yeah, like, yeah. she's proper, like, I'm going to battle you when we yeah. get it. I'm saying, what do you mean? Like, they said no further action. Do you know what that means? Like, I didn't do anything. She knows it. Yeah, like, bro. Knows. Yeah, forget all that. I got home, she battered me, bro. Like, but yeah. But, but so when you was in, when you got nicked, yeah, I'll yeah. ask you this question, this is something that happened to me, Mike. Yeah. When you got nicked the first time, yeah. did you want people to see you in the police car? Bro, do you know what it is? Uh, yeah, it, <laughs> not even on. in the police car. I think they put me in a van, innit? So they wouldn't be able to see me anyway. But when I was getting nicked, like, I was like, yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, so that's bro. what I'm saying. So the correlation, like, well, I asked you a question earlier. Yeah. You want to impress people, right? Yeah. Me, well, I got involved in all that stuff because it made me get accepted and people noticed yeah. me. Yeah. So I've done it so I was noticed. So yeah. if you was doing something, I think, fuck that, I want to do this. Yeah. And I'll go one step further. So yeah, people yeah, think, wow, yeah. this geezer is wild. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's why I asked the question that the correlation is pretty much the same oh, because man. obviously it's nothing but the truth. So I'm trying to get the understanding from the youngsters that what we do mm. to be accepted and noticed isn't the best way to get accepted Yeah, no, and no, noticed, no, no, man. It's like literally like, just looking back now, bro, a 12 year old kid like running around with a bunch of 14 year old kids snatching handbags, it's just, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. Stupid, like you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't want to do that anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, as a kid, you don't really see. Yeah, the, you don't see the. You, you don't, don't see how bad it is. Yeah, you don't just, see how it's bad just it is. A laugh and a giggle, isn't it? Like literally, really? uh, like literally, like even little stuff like the the corner shop. Like we used to go in a corner shop, yeah, and just take everything. But we used to think like, yeah, man, you're a boss man. Like you know where we call boss man, boss man. We used to literally think you must have a mill under your that you have a mill somewhere in it. But it's, you're literally just a small business trying to get. You know when you get older, you clock like, oh my days, that like, we're just little shits taking a piss out of a man just trying to feed his family. That like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like, yeah, now nah, stuff like that's not cool at all. But yeah, you do it without realizing when you're a kid, innit? it's but, part of the learning yeah. process and yeah. development, you know. Yeah. So if you um could go back to when you were 12 years old, what would have, could have or would have stopped you going on that path where you were trying to impress the elders, obviously getting in trouble? Is there anything that could have stopped you going down that path? Um, what could have stopped me going down that path? Uh, yeah, probably, obviously, like, like I'm, not, I'm not from, like, you get me, I'm just poor, innit? So, like, I really didn't have anything, like, do you know what I'm saying? So everything I was doing as well was always an opportunity to try and get some some money, like so I could get myself. Because like even like few of my friends, like they all had stuff like from their parents and that, like trainers and stuff, you know, like and it's like that, I, I could I could have been like the butt of the jokes and that. Do you know what I mean? Because of what I was wearing and stuff like that. So really, like if I was doing anything at that time, it was partly because. I know I could get some financial gain mm -hmm. and I could change like my situation in it. Cause here's a question for you: Did you get fed every day? I definitely got fed every day. Yeah. So really, yeah, because this is no. But even that, even that, it's not. I'm not saying like, oh, it's right because oh, my mum couldn't buy me trainers and that. Because it's like when I do look back, like she gave man the best upbringing yeah. I could have asked for. She gave me everything. Do you know what I'm saying like morals this a, a, a very nice hot plate of food every saying. day do you know what I mean and make my breath iron my shirts teach me how to bath and that like, certain people's parents didn't even teach them how to bath like do you mm. know what I'm saying like so it's that's like, why I go into these questions yeah. right? because it was only because of the the sort of expectation mm. and sort of materialistic acquisition want and need mm. to fit in yeah. that made you make these choices yeah no nah, yeah it wasn't because you was left abandoned. It yeah. wasn't because you was accustomed to seeing people taking drugs or yeah. drinking alcohol. Like yeah, you had yeah. a very strict household. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you just chose to fit in yeah. with the wrong environments, making the yeah, wrong Yeah, also, choices. obviously, my dad weren't there, innit? It doesn't like, play a massive yeah, part. They, yeah, so it's like, yeah. 
So maybe if he was in the house and I'm sneaking out and stuff like that, I like, yeah, the beats would have hurt more. I might have stayed, <laughs> I might have stayed in there. Yeah, I, saying, I don't know. Bro. Or, or, or <laughs> you could have ended up like me, mate. Oh, yeah. the old man. It's a yin and a yang. And there's no good and there's no bad way. It's just yeah. the way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I look at everything as a, a choice making process. Yeah. So we all make choices. Like mm. I look back on my life now and I realised the choices I made was because of what I went without, mm. you know, and it's it's that need and that want to fit in with everybody that makes you sort of break protocol of yeah. mum's wants and needs. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I'm no, definitely, definitely, definitely. So yeah, it's definitely outside things because stuff like that wasn't important to my mum as long as I had trainers, do you know what I'm saying, or had clothes, do you know what I'm saying, and really that is what's important. But do you know what I mean? I, I think it's a, it's a yeah, I think that like London is one of those things as well, where where it's like we can be pov here, but then right across the road. So we're in Camden here, like in the Crescent here, but then right across the road is Primrose Hill, like and these places. So we're just accustomed so to see Park Hill, mate. It's, yeah. not even, it's not even Primrose Hill. Park Hill is just like one road behind. Yeah, literally. Me. So we're we you know we're, like we're going up here with nothing, and then we're seeing like do you know what I mean, all these cars, all these. Even, people. Oh, right, what's this? Right, one side of Queen's Crescent yeah. is poor. Cross over the road, yeah. Queen's Crescent still like see Queen's Crescent. It goes all the way back down to Maiden Park, right? Yeah, yeah. But all the houses on the right are worth millions, yeah. and all the houses on the left are council flats. Yeah, nice no, madness. Jumps so, yeah, so I mean, it's that, yeah, those types of pressures, isn't it? Because it's mad. Because I went to Portugal the other day, yeah, and I was like, yeah, with my cousin and whatever, and just seeing how it is, and then they're explaining it to me, and then I'm seeing like it's like these are poorer then people in London, like the poor experience is worse here than in London, but the crime and all that stuff is is completely different. different. And it's like, I think that's 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 where it is, isn't it? Because they don't, it's like, first of all, they got beaches and stuff to go to, and you know what I mean, like, to clear their mind and that. Because when I went to the beach, I was just like, imagine we was allowed to do this, like. No, you, you got, imagine, you got, you got, you said in the back to... picture, like, we was able to just go to the beach and look at the sea, like. I find, I find, I agree with what you're saying, but yeah. I think in them countries, there are a lot of Latin based countries, so they're very mm. family orientated. They spend yeah. a lot of time with their family. Yeah, the cultures there is like, a bit totally different. Yeah. different. We're here because it's so multicultural. Yeah. We've all got to fit in. Yeah, right? exactly. So, nah, for real. Like, you've got Africans, right you've got yeah. Jamaicans, you've got Irish, you've got Romanians, you've got everybody yeah. mixing in from loads of different places from, the, from all around the planet. Mm. And it's about trying to find your own identity, I find. Mm. And that's what confuses a lot of us youngsters growing up. No, definitely. Even the thing that he was talking about just now, but before we was talking about um, the uh, Schneid Raffies, isn't it? Yeah. Um, fake, um, fake Raff and that. And I remember one of the boys from my from my um, my block, English boy. He it was like it was like they was rich. Yeah, it was like they was rich because they would come out and Raff Lauren and stuff like that. Do you know what I'm saying? But only years later, when I was walking up the market and that, and I'm clocking weight. You realised, didn't it? What? You lot have just been going across the road to this market, buying. I didn't even know because I, I, I didn't even got money to buy anything in the market, do you know what I'm saying? So I never used to look at it to even know that that's there, like, do you know what I'm saying? So all this time, you've been, you was poor like us, bro, but just buying fake worth, bro. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Madness. And then the madness I've done just to be able to buy fucking worth, bro. It's madness. That's what I said to you earlier. I want to come, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, is that? I like that guy. I thought, what? what? Yeah, you're crazy. So going back to the original question, so look, when you're 12 years old, you got rest. What would have stopped you going on that path then? So you said um, obviously you were kind of buzzing when you got nicked straight away. Obviously that's yeah, that like, sides. It's going to be on a bad path. What yeah. would have stopped you? Talk about role models or a mentor, um, or, or was it no stopping you? I don't know what could have stopped me. You know, I don't. I really don't know. I don't know what could have stopped me, but I do know. I was outside. Just trying to look at um, sort of the kids today, look at what happened to you and sort of the path you went down a few yeah. years of trouble that would stop the kids at sort of 12 year olds. Okay, on yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, like, it's then, like, yeah, I didn't have anything else to do but be outside. Do you know what I'm saying? So if I, if I had, say, piano lessons on a Monday, karate on a Tuesday, see, oh, the, do you know what I mean? Other stuff to do, like we went to the countryside on the weekends yeah. and, you know what I mean? If we had other stuff to do, then I wouldn't be with the other kids who had nothing else to do and 
you get me? We thought the good good idea was yeah. to go out robbing people. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Or if you didn't listen to your mum, educated yourself, and done all your own work, and done things properly, and things would have happened differently. As obviously, well, no, it? yeah, I, obviously, no. I listen to my mum as well, but at the same time, it's just literally, it's either I can listen to my mum, which I did listen to my mum. Like I did do my work. Like I said, I wasn't. Like I did do my work. I did. Un- I always did understand because my my dad is smart as well. So I always did understand the importance of education and getting your work done. And it wasn't that hard for me as well. So I did used to get it done. But then apart from that, apart from school, like in the house, mm. it's like I didn't have nothing to do. I didn't have a PlayStation or nothing until I was about fourteen. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like. You can play outside, innit? That's the alternative yeah. we get, innit? You can go outside, innit? You're allowed that. I remember one, yeah, <clears throat> someone that grew up in my same block, his mum didn't let him out, not at all. And then everyone in my block has been to prison that I grew up in, except for them in that house. There you go. They weren't allowed out. And, but what they did used to get was karate lessons. They did have a PlayStation. They did have a this and that and that and this. So, do you know what I mean? If you give them something else to do, if I had something else to do, maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. just hard because, like, say, we want to try and find any sort of keys that can help yeah. like, the, the youth mm. do better than what we did. And, like, say, you talk about piano lessons, all this. Yeah. Like, I had all music lessons, yeah. the karate, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm but saying. I, 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 felt, I, I felt like embarrassed because I was doing all this sort of yeah. stuff, and I used to feel, and I wanted to try and fit in with all yeah. the So then yeah. I used to be extra naughty. So I was trying to find that balance of trying yeah, to get them to do. That something but still be accepted by their peers. But this is what I'm saying, like, how, do you, how do you end up in a place where your parents yeah. can provide that type of thing for you and we're in a place, and, and then your friends are in a complete different place where they can't even get, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that that actually happens a lot as well. Yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah, of, again, my, it's, it's a lot just, of people I grew up with are like that as that's well. That's why everyone needs a, 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 a version of Marvin Herbert in their life. <laughs> <laughs> a new Marvin Herbert, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's just, it's just about, I believe it's about Finding the qualities within the individual, yeah, through hard work and commitment to develop strategies and structures that will help them grow. You know, and it's it's really not hard once you get the right information. And it's about being around the right mentors or the right mindsets of so people, you know. So, so things are changing. It's a weird one, it's a weird one. It's like because you, oh, first of all you have to um you have to um, you have to find the, the individuals that are troubled. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the kids, you have to. Um, what's the word, man? You do need to find them. Yeah, like, you no know, pick out from the bunch which ones are going to go down the wrong road because not everyone is going to go down that way. Do you know what I'm saying? But they stand out like a sore thumb. Yeah, no, they do. They do stand they do, out they like do, a sore thumb. Do, so they do. They, like, for me to notice what kids are naughty, it wouldn't take long so I know I could find out what he's naughty oh he's a naughty kid and then I'll speak to him for a couple of hours you find out what they're good at find, yeah. and just make them explore their yeah, mindset yeah, 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 yeah. literally literally that's so what I mean, and about, you know what the prime example is young G-Man yeah. you because mm. that's what I've done with G-Man when we started first doing bits and pieces yeah. and we went to the gym for a few months and he, he's found his feet and mm. basically look what's developed from that mm. you know what I'm saying and it's just about that same sort of inspirational motivation that you need to give the youngsters to make them realise that they are important yeah. and their outside environment isn't going to do anything but hold them back from their true potential and mm. it's about making people believe in their own potential I believe you know yeah mm. for sure so um, going back to this 12 year old uh, when you were nicked as a 12 year old yeah. did um, that end up giving you more sort of street cred like say your older brother hadn't even been nicked himself and I know he didn't get charged um, but it's, street it was, yeah must give you kudos as they say like it's part of the gang and mm, I don't know you know you're like, excited about it so no it's not, I weren't like excited I know it's just I've, like, I've been it's there like, it's just fucked up yeah like, like I got I'm getting nicked like shit like mm. I'm getting nicked it was that feeling innit like shit then like now I can say I got nicked innit like you get yeah. but it's like yeah I don't think yeah I don't think that was like a big uh, pat on the back or whatever that was more stress for me than anything do you know what I mean I had to go to like youth offending and shit like that like do you know what I mean and then yeah, and then I kind of, it kind of made me keep getting arrested because they knew my name, like, do you know what I'm saying? But you say you keep, so it wasn't enough to put you off it, surely you must have to be doing stuff to keep being arrested or you're around still the same people, the same sort oh, of yeah, activities. No, um, definitely not enough to put me off it, like, because obviously I just spent a night in a cell and then, yeah. and then um, I went home, innit, or a couple hours. To be honest, it actually kept me for a long time. I think they kept me overnight. I don't think it was even allowed. I always think about that, you know. When you're 12, innit? 
They're supposed to call your parents straight away. Yeah, I was they, 16. Bro, my my mum came the next day or time, or if that was it was in the afternoon. What was the crime? Robbery. Yeah, that's why then, isn't it? So you'd be kept in overnight until they got over an appropriate adult. Yeah. Where your mum, they might have spoken. No, but that's what I'm saying. They're supposed to call her straight away. They would have left me in the cell to whatever time, and then called my mum like, yeah, come get him. Because, mm. right, yeah, that was them. Mm. So I was watching the documentary earlier. Oh, did you? And I watch saw the, um, the church scene and the substance. So your mum must yeah. have strong faith and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you had obviously had faith instilled into yeah, you. Yeah, strong, age, a strong yeah, Christian upbringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So like I said, you were, had all the morals at home instilled in you, but it's just the influence of the road and peers and yeah. so many different things that people are trying to do. Like I said, it might even be the clothing where yeah. you're not feeling like you're fitting in. Yeah. And um, so, do you do any work these days with kids that? that are on the trouble path in order to try and stop them going down a similar path that you went down? Um, yeah, yeah, I actually do. Um, um, there was someone I grew up with um, called um, Jason, and he um, his, he was basically our youth worker growing up. So he was one of the guys that um, was um, working with troubled kids and whatever from young, innit? So we had that, the bunch of us from young in it so he that used to do things that take us to full park and nando's and you get me the youth club and and just a safe haven in it he created like a safe haven for us so yeah i'd, I'd definitely go back to where he works at st mary's youth club and try to talk to the kids i, I had a meeting with um keir starmer actually okay. yeah keir starmer um yeah so he's introduced us because he kind of wanted to get a, a better insight where he's becoming a labor leader and whatever into what um like young boys that and black boys go through on the roads in it um so yeah we had a meeting with a couple of the other kids and we were just explaining to them like just kind of what it's like like growing up in this day and age yeah because obviously you're in a um unbelievably powerful position where it might be coming to being able to influence the kids obviously yeah. you're yeah, extremely yeah. popular musician so um yeah. i think it's all about trying to harness that yeah and trying to stop as many kids going down no, one thousand percent, and I, 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 I try to do it in my real life more than anything. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, say there's a situation with um like a couple of youths I know, like but they're like on the roads and whatever. But it's like, like a couple of the boys is looking after them and whatever. But it's like, what um one time, one of these kids must have come in the house and grabbed a knife and ran back out the house. He was like, what the fuck about this kid's about 14 or something? I said, what's he doing? Like, that? First of all, like, who thinks that is acceptable to walk past big men and a big woman, go into someone's kitchen, take a knife and leave without even saying anything? Like, are you mad? Like, do you know what I'm saying? First of all, the kids of today, like, they don't even understand what respect is. Second of all, why the fuck do you feel like you need to do that? Cool. He's left the gaff. No, he tried to leave the gap. We stopped him. Like, Bob, what's going on? Oh, these guys, they just tried to rush me outside. Who are they? We're big boys. And I was like, what? All right, cool, let's go see what's, what it's about. Put him in the car. We've gone round there. I've seen, oh, it's just another little kid was was his age, isn't it? So I basically, like, you know who I am? Yeah, yeah I know who you are. I said, yeah, this is my young boy. What happened? Um, oh, these lot rushed me or they beat me up. So he would have beat him up. Prior. Prior, like in Swiss Cottage or something. Duh, 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 duh. And then, um, and then, yeah, so he must have just seen him now and just got him back in it. Yeah. So I was just like, bruv, this ain't happening, innit? We're not doing this. I'm not going to let you stab him and then you lot are going to be beefing for the fucking next 15 years of your life because that's how it goes. Like, literally, like, you can have a small little thing and you're 14 years old and then because you've taken such a serious action, now nah, you've got to live with that for the rest of your life, near enough, until someone doesn't want to be a bad boy anymore, like, do you know what I'm saying? So it was like, yeah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. You lot are going to be friends, bruv, if anything, like, spud each other. That's one one, innit? Like, we don't need to stab each other. We don't need to hit each other. After that, they become, like, best of friends, bruv. Best of friends, they did. Always the so it's like, like I'm saying, in real life, in real life, that's the type of things I like to do. I like to, like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's the type, of, because it's like, it's easy to like, oh, speak and that and give someone, um, you know what I'm saying? But in direct, direct action is, is what they need. That's what, so people. a lot of these kids ain't got no orders, like nobody giving them no guidance because a lot of these guys out here are just mugs anyway. So they don't even know what to tell the kids. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of guys on the roads. A they, lot of the olders. Yeah, a lot of the olders. Older, a lot of the olders. Up, older, they're yeah, washed yeah, up guys. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, they, they want to act cool to the kids. 
and told them, yeah, back in my day, I used to this and that and, and that and this. They're the ones I call the groomers. Yeah, mugs. Yeah, more than anything, the they, you're, you're grooming kids and it's like, you're not, you're not letting, you're not um, growing them with a right not sense of thinking. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, not letting, you're not allowing their potential. It's like somebody else, maybe, I don't know, innit, would have just let it happen. Like, oh, yeah, what are you violating? Yeah, watch go, it, go, watch go. Go. Yeah. I'll come and let them fight. Yeah, yeah. Let, Right, you know I mean? it was all made to fight. Do you yeah. know what I mean, I mean one group will bring up another group, and you have to have a fight, or you yeah. have to fight two or three people. Mm. But yeah, the, the, that's why I'm on my journey doing what I'm doing. Cause mm. All the grooming shit is just no good. Mm. And the older drunk, they act like they're not grooming. They mm. act like they're your friend. I'm yeah. your pal. Come here, youngster. Take this. Take that. Take this. And then they're just using them to benefit. You know. Mm. And it's just the same. It's just the same patterns, just different generations. But I find the generations are getting weaker and weaker and weaker because there's no real form of support or intelligence based mm. sort of principles like it's just yeah it's just every it's kind of like everybody bro. acting acting out yeah. bro uh, acting out whatever film they think that they're living in like do you know what i'm saying so nobody wants to tell anybody anything really like do you know what i'm saying nobody has any sort of structure to what they're doing so you can't really implement any sort of structure on anybody else do you know what i'm saying certain people do obviously but it's like yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm more about that, more about the action, really, yeah. But yeah, there's um, so few positive influences out there on the kids, yeah. isn't there? And there's so many there ain't influences. none on the road. Yeah. There's... There ain't no, and there ain't, there ain't no positive influences on the road. Like, there was only one guy from the Crescent that was a positive influence in my life, and I never listened to him. And it broke my heart when he died. It was the only, I think that's the only funeral I've been to where I've cried uncontrollably. His name is Eddie Topping. From Kentish Town, Camden, mm. um, Kentish and uh, Queens Crescent, um, Kentish Town, um, and he used to beat me up when he used to see me bunking off school, mm. and he used to beat me up, and I used to hate him. Mm. Like one until he died, yeah, that I realised the significance in his relationship with me, mm. and it hurt me that I couldn't sort of thank him for trying to keep me on the off the road. Do you know what I mean? Because he was one. Why are you hanging about with these ones? They're, they're junkies. They're they're fucking idiots. Why are you hanging with these? Don't do this. Don't like. We don't let my pals. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I'll say that. I'll say that about um, Tweety. Do you know Tweety? Yeah. Yeah. He was one of the oldest that used to tell me, "Listen, bruv, bruv, you're smarter than this. Make sure you're doing this. Make sure you're doing there's that. Only, make sure there's you only one or two people. Yeah, yeah. There's always one or two. But when I always do think about it, and I say it to the man, then they always used to tell us, you know. But it's not just. Because it's not the olders all the time. It's not the olders, isn't it? It's, it's like, not the it's, you it's like some old guy that used to be on the road in the youth club saying to you, ah, oh, trust me, boys, it just ends up in prison and prison and death. And you're just like, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, right, mate, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do it better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do it better. Uh, That's the same. Like, who, like, who the fuck are you? Like, yeah. you get it? Like, well, you're washed up, bro. You're yeah. in the community. You're going to be a millionaire. Yeah. You're shit. Yeah. And that's the mindset from the street growing up. Yeah, you know what literally, I'm literally. It just, it gets passed on. Do you know what I mean? Because no one gets taught. That's why I do what I do, to teach them, listen, mm. I've been there. Mm. I've been there with the cartels. I've been there with the bank robbers. I've been there with the armed robbers. We've had millions of pounds, but it ain't worth it. Mm. I, a lot of the always won't tell them I was a mug. Mm. I was wasting my life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm an idiot. Why would you want to be an idiot? Why would you want to go to prison? Mm. I've got a, a relationship with my son. I've got a better relationship with my son's friends than I have with my son because of the neglect that I give him growing up. Do you understand? And I can appreciate it and I respect it the relationship we have but I was always addicted to the road so me giving my kids money what I never had growing up food I never had growing up materialistic stuff I never had growing up I thought that was more important than being there it's only when he's turned into a young man that I've realised the detrimental acts that I had done to his life and the relationship we have now proves how damaging that is hence the reason why I do what I do now I can't ever repair the damage I've caused for him but Hopefully you'll see the light and see the sense in what I was and what I've become, and maybe one day respect me for that, you know. But it's it's, it's the the road hasn't got any moralistic moralistic yardsticks to mm. keep the kids on the straight and narrow. That's the that's the thing. There's no there's no there's not much sense to it. There's not much sense to. So there's not much sense to teach because there's not much sense to it. No, it's, you know it's I mean? just get this kid, he's got yeah. arsehole. Yeah. Get this kid because yeah. he's got product. Yeah. He yeah. can sell something, he yeah. can lose something, he yeah. can do something. Yeah. So they pretend they're your friend. Yeah, you're my pal, you're my pal, you're my pal, you're my pal. Yeah. But when it comes time to pay and they don't pay, then it's a fucking problem. Yeah. And then I never realised much later on in life that it was grooming and we were using people. That was only because of certain things that happened with um, young people from the plot that um, I worked with and then found out they were my son's friends. Do you understand? And you do things 
think, wow, I'm actually causing these problems. This is my fault. Like, I've got to stop doing this. Thing. This stuff's what will change. You know what I'm saying? So, it's what sort of influenced you to sort of be on the road or the journey you're on now? And what influenced you to be the man you was growing up with the need to help people? What was the main contributing factor in your world that made you think, you know what? I ain't gonna let them fight. Mm. I wanna help them. Was that just something that come naturally or was it just something um, that you, you... It's definitely something that probably come naturally just from, um, just from um, like who my mum is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the, what, what she's instilled in me. Like in that sense, so but it's realizing. like it's like, yeah. But it's like I I come to a point in my life where I didn't care about if these kids were stabbing each other or this person was. Do you know what I'm saying? But then what did happen was a couple of years ago now, one of my one of my one of my young boys killed another one of my young boys. You get it, like, and it's like I was just like if. I could have been a grown man about it from I heard about what was going on between them and stepped in and been like, boys, we can't do this. Like, we're all connected here. Can we stop it, please, bro? Like, can you pay him back what you owe him? Whatever. And I had the power to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? But the way I've grown up, like, in the Cree, it's like, Psh, not me, boy. Like, if someone's something, something's happening over there and that's going on over there, well, that's you lot. If something's going on, that's you lot, innit? It's sorted now, innit? Whatever, innit? You have to grow up like we did, innit? Nobody stepped in when we was beefing these guys. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. not that weren't that attitude man carried towards it, but it's just, that's just how, that's why I didn't take it so serious up until the point it happened, like, do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I realised then, like, when I'm, that, all our mums at a funeral crying and that, it's just like, bruv, I'm not letting this happen again, like. So that's the Do you know what I'm point, saying? It's like if so I if was, there's that that the was that was question. that was the answer, yeah. yeah. So yeah. literally, like if if I see any of these youths, like, or if there's a situation where I can, like, the power being myself can make it stop. So that was the catalyst that made you. Yeah, that was definitely the yeah. catalyst. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's always trauma that creates the transition. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's good. So it's nice that. that because a lot of people don't learn from stuff like that because mm. I grew up and I never paid attention to the people crying at the funerals. I never yeah. paid attention to the people crying around mm. houses. Like, to me, they're weak, they're crying, mm. they're weak. Like, you know, this is my mum, innit? Do you know what I'm know. saying? And this is my little brother's friends. Mm. It's just like, fuck me, bro. Got my mum crying. Like, my little brother's friends. I could have stopped it, like. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like, that's what made me, like, 100%, like, nah, if there's anything... Like and yeah, any kids, any any type of you know what I'm saying situation I see and it's like this ain't this ain't the move. So I'm gonna let you, gonna let you know that's positive, that's not right? the move. Yeah, so no, how that negative come this positive? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm saying so you can use that as a catalyst into driving you towards who you're becoming now. Yeah, sick. So um, like I said, we're constantly trying to put the kids off the life of crime. Obviously, Marvin's talked about the consequences he suffered mm. in the past. So what did you what did you get out of the life of crime? What consequences did you suffer? In terms, of, did you get hurt at times? Um, yeah, like that like they said, bro. It's just prison and death, innit? Like literally, like it's mad because I talk to my powers now, and it's like, bro, do you remember that like, they used to say that to us, like, like because our life is all real now, and there's everyone's got all the ripples have happened. Yeah, bro. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, do you know what I mean? Like, even there's guys even that's just on the run and that, like, like, do you know what I mean? For mad things, and it's like, bro, they told us it would be like this, you know? And we thought we knew better, bro. We they we used to say it to us, brother, in youth club and that, bro. It's just, you're going down one, you get me, bro, and then now, nah, bro. You know what I mean? Everyone's either dead or in prison or a bit nuts or a bit trampy, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, bro? And then drugs in prison. Yeah, you know I mean, bro. It's a bit mad. It is a bit mad. It's, just, it's, about, that's, it's not mad, it's reality. No, it's reality. It's a choice making yeah, process, facts, right? Facts, facts. And this is why I've got you on, really, because it's only people like us that can actually make the youngsters understand that it's not actually worth going down that road because there is another way. So for argument's sake, man, you got out of jail a few years ago and from then to now, it's been a short space of time, mm. right? And the short space of time that you've been at, you've grown phenomenally well. Your whole group has grown phenomenally well. Mm. You know, um, Buzzworld's grown on to become like mega star material and I have no doubt Not that you're sure going to be everyone's going to be multi-millionaires in times to come Not you know sure. like there's, there's, there's nothing 
that you guys are doing now that doesn't show me that you're going to be successful. That shows me that you're not going to be successful. Do you know what I'm saying? And I can say that because the the sort of mindset the young Gotten's got, young G-Man, mm -hmm. you know, because the the drive, the passion, and the sort of mindset that he has is it's like it's it's definitely um, crucial to our success. G Man's part that he plays in um, the team. So I, 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 know, I, know that. Yeah. I, I know that more so than yourself, right? Because there's things that go on in life that everybody sees, and there's things that go on in life that nobody sees. Mm. Now, depending on people's egos or people's mindset, determines how much everybody gets to know about reality. But um, G Man's a phenomenal human being and I met him when he was trying to become the man that he was I, was, I met him when he was trying to become the man he is today mm. and the transition that he made from then to now is absolutely phenomenal and he made it because of hard work commitment determination and focus you know and diet and exercise and, and Marvin Albert yeah <laughs> the key that's <laughs> what he's trying to say no yeah. no no what is what is, what is but, I don't need to say it. You say it. No, no, right? it's facts. It's right? facts because yeah, no, one thousand percent. By the time I come out of jail, um, really? yeah, 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 like yeah, fans, yeah, like, yeah. G fans. was G was on, and it. it was like he, it was you. He was rolling with him, whatever. And obviously, you like, used to do whatever he used to do. But yeah, whatever path he put you on, no, you put him on, definitely made him like a hundred percent the person that we need him to be. Do you know what I'm saying? Because especially the team of me, him, and Ramps, it's like. It's like we all need each other, do you know what I'm saying? And but that's the beautiful thing yeah. about a team, right? Yeah. About a harmonious team, is everybody plays their part yeah. and everybody's proud to play their part and everybody yeah. achieves the goal as a conglomerate, yeah. you know? So it's when you have an organisation where everybody wants to be a boss yeah. and that's the problem with the road. That's the everybody problem with the road. Ro everybody so, wants to be a boss, yeah. right? But it's, it's about changing that mindset. Mm. So like you just said, yeah, I like to nick a bit of credit now and then, mm. right? And it's nice to nick a bit of credit now and then, but G-Man mm. done all the hard work and it wasn't easy for him. I'm mm. telling you now, there was times he was like, I've, I've, got, I've got a video and I'm gonna post it because he said, <sighs> he videoed me in the gym, he said, look at this guy, he's got me busted today. <laughs> he's got me busted today. Like, and I'm old and I've been mash up, do you know what I'm saying? But it's my hard work and commitment and drive sort of inspired him to push himself to them levels. Yeah, that's and then sure. him pushing himself to them levels, he's like, what? No, you gotta push yourself to these levels. You gotta do this. Come on, man, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. So yeah, that's for sure, yeah. Yeah, it's just about the, the little transition of mindset, little movements and the commitment, mm. the behaviour and the conduct. As long I'd as just say one thing about that though, just the whole everyone wants to be a boss on a rose type thing, yeah. Go on. It's like I just feel like yeah, I got this from um Jordan Peterson. Yeah. It's like there's like, there's different types of personalities on the road, in it, and there's 16. always there's always like the leaders in it and the entrepreneurial ones. Do you know what I mean? Like the creatives. Yeah. So it's like if you're like a creative, yeah, and if you if you're creative like entrepreneur, yeah, and you can recognize that, and then you your powers can recognize that in you, and you and you know that about yourself, yeah. It's like. What you need, yeah, you don't need another person exactly like you because you're going to clash. You don't need another person because you're going to clash, you know what I'm saying? You need a per. So it's like, there's a creative, there's an organiser, and then there's an administrator. So that's how, like, we got, like, a perfect circle. So you, I've been a playing creative. your part. Everybody's playing the organiser, ramps to the administrator, and together we're just a, a, a phenomenal team. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what everybody kind of needs. Like, you need to have a team, and you lot need to, un everybody needs to understand who plays what role in that team, innit? And there should be no egos. But the road, the road doesn't allow that to happen. No, we don't allow that to happen. But why like, doesn't it allow that to happen? Because everybody wants to be the guy, bro. No, because everybody wants, right, everybody's making money. So if mm. you're making money, you, you're the guy. I'm no, do you know what it is? Do you know what it is as well, though? It's a, though? It's a mm. misplaced insecurity mm. because people think because they've got money, they're a boss. Yeah. But you might not know how to do yeah. what G-Man does. Yeah. Like, no one knows how to do what I do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They can only mimic things that I do, but they'll never know how to do what I do. 
Like, and I want to say it because G Man said it. I speak things into existence, yeah. right? Because that's the belief I have. Because I know what I'm doing, where I'm going, and how I'm going to do it. Mm. Because as long as my behaviour, my conduct is correct, I know I'm going to achieve that goal. Mm. On the road, what happens is this: he'll be making money. I'll be making money. He'd be making a little bit more money than me, and I think, you know what? I've got to get that. How can I get that? I don't know what. I'll fucking snake him up. So everybody's not trying to do what they can do the best way. They're trying to do it in the most selfish way for their benefit. Uh, so like we can revert back to the everybody playing their part. Uh, if you can put people in a circle and everybody plays their individual part, you'll never have any problems. Uh, so I think, is, do you know what I think it is though? Like from the start, anyway, for, for gang members anyway, yeah? I feel like where it starts off here yeah, as Dakar, like, like what I'm saying we was doing, we was all doing stuff together, like robbing stuff or beefing guys. So it's like, it's we're all on an equal kind of playing field when we're doing th that type of thing. But then when it comes to more like entrepreneurial type of yeah. angles, it's like everybody's egos gets confused because it's like, oh, you can't, I can't be your, I can't be your worker. We're the same guy. We do this and that, we do that and this. But it's like, the reason why you can is because he had the idea to do that. He understands the maths in doing that. Do you know what I'm saying? And then you understand how to be safe and how mm. to conduct yourself. And so it's like that's a solid position that you can play. He can make you under you. He can make you understand how you can break bread and you can move on as an organization. You can grow as an organization. But if you don't understand that about each other then it's like, it always, I don't know, like people, that's why people always end up, uh, yeah, bro, shit, it, bro. I, 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 can, I can reiterate what you're saying and support something. And then the that's where way. the youngers come in as well, because it's like, a lot of people clash where... I'll give you an example why yeah. I used to clash with people, mm. right? Because I was wild and I was, I was hard, I can have a fight, yeah. right? I'm not embarrassed to say I could have a terrible fight. I can have a terrible fight. So because I, I was, I felt powerful. Right? And I felt I could shoot, I could kill, I could stab, I'll fuck you up with the hands. You got to do as you're told. Yeah. So that was yeah, my that's, that's another That's up. another one as yeah. well. There's the I people can, that I think be told hard. what to do. You can't be told what to do. You yeah. had to do what I wanted to do. And yeah. if I couldn't control that situation, I wasn't interested. Mm. So when people used to come to me and say, Mark, I've got this idea. What is it? What do we do? I've got to do what? No, I want to do that. I want to take that. I want to get oh, Mark, No, we don't do that. We yeah. do it this way. I oh, fuck that. I ain't interested. Yeah. So of my ignorance i shut a lot of doors on myself growing up yeah, because i never realized playing my part until later in life mm. do you understand and you're lucky because a lot of guys like that as well that think because you can fight because you go you think that that's going to carry you through life you end up, you go to jail it's not going to carry you you go you get me no it does what? listen it does carry no 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 i'm not saying it it, Let me it helps no, but no. i'm saying it's like it's it kind of consumes you, innit? Yeah, the ego of it uh, consumes you. So you don't understand what is actually important, what other people do that is not just the physical thing you get. That's that, it. You know what I'm saying? Right, so because the road is very violent, yeah. right? I, I, I'm not talking about anybody, I'm talking yeah. about me, right? Because I could fight, I could get stabbed, I could get cut. It never hurt me, I didn't give up. Mm. So to me, yeah, I weren't scared of no one. So because I weren't scared of no one, anybody that showed fear to me was a pussy. Mm. Do you understand? So how can I listen to a pussy? That's my ignorance. Do you know what I mean? Where later in life, I started yeah. learning, wow, this guy was pretty smart. Yeah. Wow, these people, what? Yeah. what? So yeah. I started listening to people and started learning. And mm. once I started listening and learning, I started growing. And once I started growing, things started changing for me. But I think a lot of the kids on the road are too fake with themselves, you know, to actually overcome their ignorance. This is you know, what I'm saying, man. And that's, that's the problem. So once we can break that cycle, mm. yeah, because all, I'm going to try a little thing at the moment in the next couple of years, right, to get into these young kids about being men, right? Yeah. Now, if you can't protect your family without a weapon, what kind of a man are you? Mm. Do you understand? Like, what kind of a man are you if you can't protect your family without a weapon? Mm. That 100% resonates with me like this the other day. Right, like, because it doesn't mean you're a man. A man is a man by principle, a man is a man by definition. A man isn't a man because he thinks he's a man. Mm. I mean, a man is, a, a man doesn't ever get angry. Mm. 
That's what I'm saying. It's about being honest with yourself, yeah, man. It's, it's about understanding your emotions, understanding who you need to be in it. It's about purpose in it more than anything. That's what that's what really the conversation's about in it. Finding a purpose for everyone in it. Once you have got a purpose, then you understand. No, um, everyone's got the same purpose, but it's about strategy. No, they, no, everyone's got a purpose to survive. No, of course. The not. main purpose is to survive, and what yeah. we choose to do to survive determines who we become yeah so i wanted to survive by any means necessary so i would have done anything as a kid like yeah, yeah. and then it got to a stage where i wouldn't do this because it's muggy yeah like i got to a certain age i won't, I won't do that crime no more yeah. i won't do that crime no more because yeah. that's a muggy crime that's yeah. a muggy crime so yeah. my ego kept me moving because every crime i got involved with every criminal I got involved with they never lived up to my expectation. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. thought, wow, these lot are weak, bro. Yeah, these yeah, lot, are, yeah. they're, like, they're not on it. They ain't got yeah, no money. Yeah, yeah. Be, like, I'm thinking these people are gonna have more money than me, and I'm having them. I'm thinking they ain't got no money. Oh, these are fucking idiots. I'm moving, moving, yeah, moving. Yeah, no, nah, it happens a lot. So, like yeah, I keep going back to, it's about creating the mindset to all changing the products. What people are focusing all their energies on. Do you know what I mean? Because everyone focuses their energies on the wrong products and the wrong mindset. So once we can make that little transition with people's perceptions on reality, then we'll have a, a winning formula. 100%, and I think it's, um, like I said, people are so easily influenced by different things. For you, it might have been the clothes you had as a child. Yeah, yeah. Made you, but who cares about what these other people think? Yeah. For me, it was, I felt like I was a bit muggy while I was playing, doing yeah. music stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I weren't one of the chaps yeah, you felt yeah, like a square yeah, yeah. 100% so then I ended up going down there yeah. and that extra level to fit in be more so kids, because yeah. I felt like I was the one most behind um, so we're talking about earlier when you're 12 years old and you got arrested and um, it's actually an exciting feeling for you that you're that misguided at the mm. time but the result of that you ended up going down the life or certainly a few years of crime, you end up in prison. Yeah. By the time you end up in prison I'm sure you didn't find prison exciting. No, Talk no. to me about your experiences of prison and uh, if anyone's stupid enough to go down that life or that line, what um, they can expect in prison? Yeah, prison, prison is nothing but yeah, it's nothing but four walls, man. Nothing but boredom. Nothing but nothing but nothing, man. It's nothing but a waste of time. So I like telling people, if you don't like sticking things up your bum, yeah, and you don't like smelling things that smell like poo, <laughs> yeah, don't go to prison. Listen, like that's what it's literally that, bro. It's like yeah. that's all thing the other day. Like you think about going to prison or doing something that's going to send you to prison for a long time, go sit in the bathroom, like, and see if you can do that for 24 hours. Just sit in your bathroom. And then even that's better still, it is. In, in better still, yeah, get a couple of bars of soap, cut them in half, yeah, and push them up your bum. <laughs> and that's the truth. In you an, should in, start in doing that. In in you're going to have You should, because that's what you're going to be dealing with. Oh, not yeah, not yeah. once or twice, daily. No, 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 daily. no, not daily, not daily, not daily. All day. No, all day, yeah. All day, yeah. All day. Like, all day. your phone goes up, your phone's up there till the night time, yeah? Oh, but you're a bit of blood that you're getting in there to smoke and to sell. Come on, man. Like, you got to violate yourself as a human being no. to be that guy on the landing. No, what no, the no. hell? No, I'm being serious. Do you understand? Like, these are the things that people don't understand. So, I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start making parcels, wrap parcels up. So, let me do the next part. I'm going to show people the parcels because <laughs> you have to stick up your your bum to be the guy and like no, you said yeah, the, that's the more the you're the guy the bigger the parcel yeah. that's what you said as well yeah. so, so, I'm so, telling you the bigger the guy the yeah, bigger the parcel yeah, no, but that's, what I'm, saying, but even that, that's what I'm saying and even how big's your body and, now and that's <laughs> that's the sign of if you were, oh, well, that's I, the thing it's crazy when you I, think about it yeah nah it's nuts like, it's come nuts. on man I've, I've phones up my bum for years man. <laughs> no, no I, I don't even want to talk about it because then it's like it's like become a meme bro like, about one time it's the reality nothing no, but the truth that's, that's, that's what what this is what we got scared of kids man don't think and the thing about it is, I ain't going to do it I'll make someone else do it yeah get someone else to do it and then when you get swagged and ghosted and you land somewhere in the middle of nowhere with a million and one racist people that hate you yeah, yeah, and you've got no food yeah, that's no what, phone that's no the point money. I was going to make yeah, even stuff like on, that because you remember I landed if you didn't know do you want to tell them well obviously we met uh in slightly different circumstances yeah. in prison yeah. and uh, thankfully we both turned our life around but yeah, for sure. like you said um, the trouble from your area can follow you yeah, in the yeah. way prison yeah, you yeah, went, literally, as soon as you I went to prison in prison. Oxford which is however far away from your home mm. and literally within days you were having mares bro having madnesses but within days ringing bells all day all day long getting taken to the block Getting battered, bro. Battered by these racist guys, bro. In London and that, it's all calm. You think it's cool, like you have a little tussle with Jake's, bro. These are ten guys battering you, bro. Ah, like, oh, mate, listen, you don't want to go to prison, guys. Don't want to go. It's not. It's no good. It's no good. It's no good. And then on top of that, if you don't want to be the guy that's banking parcels and that, you're gonna be the guy 
listen, smelling somebody else's shit all day anyway, bro. Do you know what I'm saying, bro? Eating fucking bollocks all day. Phones next to you again. Uh, <laughs> Someone else's phone, you know, like, uh, yeah, no, like come on, man. It's like when you when you when you equate what you gotta go through, mm. like, and do you know what? This is how sick it is. I was proud to be that guy when I was there. No, but this is like, the thing. No, this is the thing. Sick, no. but, Wait, but that, that guy thing. is the man. He's the I successful the, one in there. I was this the is man. the guy, bro. This is the guy. But <laughs> this, this is the, the thing, bro. They, it's sick. like, do you know what it is about things like that, though? Because even stuff like that's ego. Now. It's like, it's like, no, it's like, it's like, I swear, down, it's like you have to go through it to understand. Like, you don't want to do that again. Like, who wants to stick something up there? But hopefully, again, like, like you just said, you have to go for it. You don't have to go for it. So, hopefully, no, you don't we're, have gonna, to. we're gonna tell the story so the kid don't have to go yeah, through no, it. Yeah, no, I made that for real. For you don't kids. have to go through it, yeah? Because people don't understand the reality of where they're going. That, yeah, right? no, that's because it. Because they're not told this. They're not told you've mm. got to be half a batty, man. Yeah. And you're not because you're having sex. You've got to stuff things up your bum all day, mm. every day. You're violating for yourself. Years. You're violating yourself to be that guy mm. and to be accepted on the landing. You're a mug. If you can't get weed or you are not shine food, then you can't even be chatted to. Like, mm. what kind of madness mm. is that? And if you ain't got a phone, you're definitely no one to talk to. John mm. you know Sanders. So, the the olders make you think that you've got to be this guy to be accepted, but they're just violating you and teaching you how to violate. It's like that pagan mindset where they just want to hold you back so you can just be like me, mm. yeah? And like, well, uh, yeah, your things. Oh yeah, he's definitely somebody, but what? come on, man. Like what? Furthermore, bro, I was, I was, yeah, I was 19, yeah, so I was a while in, so, but there was no more space in Glen Park where I was supposed to go, so they put me in Woodhill, that's a double A cat, yeah? They put me in a double A cap. I've got to the thing here. I've got to the um, induction. Induction, they're telling me, you don't want to go to 1A, innit? Don't go to 1A. Make sure they don't let you go to 1A. Where'd you end up? Where did I end up? 1A. 1A. Why I was on 1A, that was the only single cell in the whole jail. I'm in 1A, yeah? I've just come off the road, innit? When you just come off the road, people know exactly that you must have something on you or they assume you have something on you, yeah? Cool, bro. Because if, you know what? If you're a nobody, you pause, pause was, it for a minute. In, yeah. So the older lot, this is what I'm trying to say. So the older lot, yeah, yeah, assume that you just come off the road. Yeah. So you must have something banked. Yeah. So what does that say about the olders? That they're rolling with this gear on them, man. They've got to shove up their bum on the out. So when you come in and they come to yourself, what you got, what you got, what you got? Do you know what I'm saying? You're like, they're actually expected because they know that they're weak scumbag people yeah. and you must be a weak scumbag person so you've got to have it and if you ain't got it then ah oh, he's no good so then move on to the next one no, we'll try but and make cool but this is me i'm a kid though and nobody knows me on this wing so it's like you know that one yeah so but it's it's, you know what's, no, what's coming next they're gonna put a spoon up my ass that's what's coming and this next. really happens. they're gonna try and take this it off really me, tell like, no this really happens like i had big fuck off that Pikeys, are you allowed to say that? Yeah, yeah. on the Irish travellers would be better. No, nah, there was even um, English travellers. Or English travellers. At my door, like big fuck off crackers, not crackers you see on the street that like, smoking. Like I heard crackers. you. I heard Oi, you. When I, you get there, like you I, see crackers that you've never seen before. Yeah, I did. Trust and believe. I heard you got it. Da, 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 whatever, whatever. Me, bruv. In my cell all night thinking, bruv, first guy that comes in here, I'm gonna have to dash water at them, whatever. Da, 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 da. Bro, lucky that I'm blessed, bro, and my mum's prayers and whatever, yeah, because I did have a pack on me, bro, yeah. By the time I hit exercise, I'm walking around exercise, yeah, got the whole wing looking at me, bro. This is the 1A, yeah, this is a wing full of murderers, bro, just just so you know, yeah. Oh, where'd you say you're from again, one of the guys? Da -da 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 -da. Camden, Crescent, da -da 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 -da. So, yeah, wait, my man's from there. He's from there, yeah, you know, he's, he wants to chat to you. Gone over to this guy. Fucking fuck off, big guy, bro. Looking dangerous and that. So what's happening? What's the problem now? Oh, what you say from the crescent? Yeah, I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm from the crescent as well. But you know, very nice guy. I said, yeah. That's my oldest. He said, yeah, that's my youngest. I said, oh, I swear down. He said, come here. He said, you know what was about to happen to you when you got back inside? Spoon up your ass, brother. We heard you got it. Because imagine, I was on the induction with a guy who smoked, yeah. So but he was like, but he was not, but he was like, you know, one of them starred up, just bad boy nitties, like. So he was just on whatever with me, and I told him what he said. Listen, I'll, yeah, so I just patted him a little satin, and you get me? But I told him, don't tell no one. But, don't do that, though, man. No, you obviously, I'm a kid, though. I'm a kid, innit? I'm a kid. I was a kid, innit? Hold on, hold on, I'm a kid, bro, yeah? Boom. <laughs> so, blood, my man's told me. So they already knew, blood. You get me? If God didn't bless man like that, and I didn't, bro, I don't know, I would have been finished, bro. I would have had my ass spooned out, bro. Like, 
there would be nothing I could do about it. Not a damn thing I could do about it. These are double A cat. These are the baddest yep. criminals. And it's not just in you. The this, country. this can happen to anyone. Like I said, I know no, it could happen to anyone. A bad boy from my Sorry. era went to jail, and he had it happen to him. His but this is day. what I'm saying, and this is just me, a kid. And the, the only reason I'm in the jail is because there was no space in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a Y O. You get it. So it's like that's where you can end up, bro. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of fucking the worst people in the country, bro. With a spoon yeah, up your ass. That's where. That's where you. Can, that's where you could end up. And this happens what every day to people in jail. People no, get facts. raped. And people get killed. Yeah, yeah, facts. That happens every day. Every day. And do you know what? The only way that doesn't happen, mm. yeah, is if you do a Marvin Urban and just attack the people as soon as you get in and just have it the minute you get in there. And then no, obviously, obviously, that's a that's, that's a whole yeah. other that's a whole other situation. It's just another another it's like, drama. It's just drama, drama, in order drama. To protect drama, yourself, then that's what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have it. Just have it. Just have it. Just have it. So. I, I, I was one of them inmates that just had it with anyone. If you looked at me, it was off. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you said anything to me, I didn't know you, it was just off. And then, because in my brain, yeah, I'd rather go down the block, yeah, because I was a little bit smarter mm. than the average yeah. jump, right? Because me personally, you ain't getting nothing off me. So I know if it kicks off, the screws are bending us up and taking us block, mm. yeah? But when I see you again, it's off again. And then it's, eventually you get messages, pipes, the, the lines, they say, bro, come on, loudest, man, loudest. I say, no, nah, it's on, bro. When I see you on a visit, it's on. So then that fear of always being attacked by people that was unpredictable mm. was what I learned very young in prison. So I never got home leaves, I never got decats, never got mm. family visits, never got nothing because I was always that violent guy because I didn't want anything to happen to me or have that fear. But I did know every fight in prison only lasts 30 seconds. That's what I'm saying. Either you know way, I, mean? I was on all that. Like I said, like, I was in my soul in the morning with the kettle on, innit? But either way, when I look back at it now, bruv, you could have got a fucking water and then I would have been fucked, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Because these are big fucking men, bro. I was not a big man at the time, do you know what I'm just, saying? Just so it's cycle. like, bruv. It's just that vicious cycle, man. Mm, yeah. And this is what we got to make the youngsters understand. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And it's, yeah. Just, it's just not worth it. No, it's, it's just not, not worth it. I mean, not only do you lose your dignity and freedom, you've actually got to embarrass yourself. Like, Oh. <laughs> let's move on. No, this, 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 this is the reality, this man. Is this is good. This is the reality. This is the reality. Come this on, really man. Will. You and gotta this... come off your visit. You have a visit with your family or your, your yeah. friends, and you have. Yeah. I'll see you later. So you go back to yourself. It's like, yeah. damn, get this thing out, and I've got that on my finger. And I've got to unwrap this, and then, then you got to put it back up in the night time, and you got to get it out in the morning. Like, come on, man. Yeah, Jimmy knows a lot about this. This is the about listen. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to live good in there, yeah, then you need to do this stuff. To the same people that have been and you're, not, you're, not, you're not a bad man, right? Yep. But you abuse yourself, right? I did in there. Right? That's what I'm saying. My, my, my older told me the first day in there, oh, sweet, now I don't have to put all up. There's half for you. <laughs> I said, what the fuck am I doing to do He said, you're in jail now. Come on, man, you got to do this. Man, so take half of what's just been up my ass. And that's what it is. And, put it up and people are selling stuff. Up, and people are smoking stuff. That been, people are sniffing stuff. It's horrific. It's, it's, it's just disgusting. And this, this doesn't just... This happens to everyone in jail. She's you're gonna get violated, job. you're gonna get hurt, yeah. you're gonna, gonna spend gonna time in the block, mm. you're gonna abuse yourself. Yeah. It is pure insanity. It's filth. It's filth. It's so filth. It's other filth. than just traumatizing yourself, mm. on top of that, the worst thing is it's pure time wasting. Mm, that's what and it so is. And so like I said, when we look at both you guys, mm. I think now all this time you, you'll spend wasting. You know, I mean, I'm how sad this how sick this is, yeah? Is everybody that I know that I talk to and communicate with now all made the transition the same year yeah it's like the everyone made the same transition so it's been five years four years three everybody within that five year period since 2015 the amount of people that have made that transition is phenomenal well, I, think that's, I think do you know where it is though i think as well yeah because literally that's like even with me yeah because i was sitting in jail them times and i was watching a lot there was a lot that was going on on the roads like eg stormzy and all of these other people blowing up in it. So, do you remember? Do you remember, you remember before you come up? Do you remember before you come up? Before you come up, and you asked Dane to ask to hook you up yeah. with Charlie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So before you come out, all that thing was getting patterned before you even come out, and yeah. then Harry patterned it all up. Yeah, and it was just that was something for you to come out to. Mm. And then when you plugged into what G Man's mindset was like, mm. do you know what I'm saying? So the transition, everything started from G Man. Do you know what I mean? Like the transition, I'm telling you, from 2015, yeah, because when 
When like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I remember we had a conversation right with G Man. Right? We had a, we had a conversation with G Man, right? And this is the conversation that when he went, but people are treating me different. Like things. I was like, what you gotta understand is this, yeah. You're making a change now, so people are gonna have something to say. People are gonna want to do things, but just stay focused. Right, I can guarantee you in 18 months time, everybody who's talking shit now will want to jump on your wagon, mm. right? And I can guarantee you when you when we speak to G Man, he'll reiterate that, right? Because it has happened. Everything I said that was going to happen has happened, and his hard work, commitment, and determination has got him and the group where they are today. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And there was something in in the air 2015, and the ripple effects of that. No, I hear that act, though. There was something in the air. Yeah, but watch this, look, look at the ripple. Look at the ripple. Look mm. at the ripple. Now everybody that's coming in your circle now mm. wants to be a part of Buzzworld. Mm. Right, and everybody's playing their part. No one's, everyone's, look, everyone's hard. Everyone can have a fight. Everyone can get a gun. Everyone can shoot people. But we're going, do you know what? Everyone. Why? Love that, man. Let's just do this this way. Let's just do that this way. Do you know what I mean? So, because of 2000, the, the 2015 was the penultimate stage in not just my life, your life, G Man's life, but a lot of the villains like Andy Pritchard, 2015, he made the transition. Do you understand? Like, mm. there's a, a, a man, Mango, um, Kenneth Henry from Birmingham. Same thing, and there's another guy, Kenny Ken, yeah, from over Hackney, yeah. Bus driver, he's a bus driver yeah. now, yeah. But I remember when I come out of jail, I was linking him, and I went to Spain. I said, I'm coming back for you, Ken. Ken, I'm come, don't worry, Ken. And then we just, something happened, something I don't know what happened, but we just lost contact. And then I've turned my life around, I've come back, and now he's straight. And I said, Wow, look at that, Ken. Because if I'd have plugged him into what I was doing and where I was going, then we would have caused devastation. The same thing with Mango and them lot from Birmingham and the boys from Manchester, Birmingham and Leeds and Liverpool, yeah? If we'd have linked up properly, then we would have caused so much carnage. Yeah, you know I mean, but it was 2015 was the penultimate stage for all of us. Because every time I spoke to people, I said, when did you make the... About 2014, 2015, I was like, rah. So it was sank in the air in 2015. And I think it was the change, the turn of the tide within the mental sort of acknowledgement of looking at the olders thinking, wow, they're not all washed up, bro. Like, why would I want to end up like that? Why would I end up like that? Why do I want my kids to do that for 30 years? Like, because that was what it was for me. I'm thinking like, I'm looking at all the older lot, right? Thinking, hold on, you lot have been doing this for 30 years. Where are you? You're still where the kids are at. I can't be a part of that. And that was part of my transition. But the point of everybody making the right choices Everybody playing their part. Nobody wanting to be that guy. It's got everybody where they are today. And that's the thing we've got to get into. Not just Camden. We've got to get into Island. We've got to get into Bow. We've got to get into Stepney. We've got to get into Croydon. We've got to get into Brixton. We've got to get in everywhere. Mm. And then all over the country. Do you know what I'm saying? Only people like us can do this. So the network we're creating now is doing it slowly. And I reckon within seven years, we're going to have the most phenomenal network of entrepreneurial, urban children, men, women, and children becoming multi-billionaires, mate. And that was the legacy that I'm trying to create, you know. Mm, yeah. And yeah. that's where we're going. Because you lot, come that's on. Good, that's good, you that's lot, good. Come on, you lot that's turning what, it now, though. That's what, that's what it needs to be. But it's happening, but it's happening. It's happening, right? And that beautiful thing about it, it's happening, yeah? It's documented, yeah? It's documented. Everything's documented, right? Yeah, everything documented, yeah, videos, no, facts, everything. It's facts. Right? Is that even the police have to check the man properly now? Come, oh, see the video, see the other day, I was like, wow, look at that, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's like, bro, I make more money than a boss, bro. Come on. You get it? Talk to them That's properly. So um, we were speaking earlier about the low times, obviously now talking transitioning to what yeah. you're up to today. Obviously, I was talking, everything needs hard work and dedication, but yeah. it's the choices which are the most important thing, making the correct choices. It's the right choices. So sure. obviously you had influences there, but yeah. what has allowed you to make those correct choices since you obviously, um, you what's been pivotal? Yeah, no, well? definitely, like, that's what I'm saying, like, when I'm, just before I come out and whatever, like, I, I made, like, a conscious decision, like, this is what I want to do, innit? And what I did understand is, like, I needed some real structure. I was working with G-Man and Ramps, it's, that's just my, my Cody from forever. Anyway, we, we've always done business together. Even the same with G-Man, actually, do you know what I'm saying? We always have, but we've never focused our energy on anything, no. Um, legit or positive? No, we have done legit, because me and Ramps have had the boss status from early, do you know what I'm saying? But it's like, mainly, it's all the other stuff. Mindset and strategies, man. No, that's what I'm saying, but literally, I said, let's 
let's come together and do it, do it properly, like, do you know what I'm saying? So what so, made you come to that decision at that point? Like, like literally, like I was saying, result like, of all the bad? Yeah, no, I'm sitting in jail and it's like I'm bumping into lots of different people, like, like I always tell this story, like, I was sitting on my bed, man, and I was watching just the news, you know how you do, innit, like, and then Stormzy's come on the TV, bro, like, saying shut up and that's bit in a whole bar in the park and I, I couldn't believe it, like, I was like, what? Because when I was on the roads uh, before and a like, couple years ago, like when everyone was doing music, but it was just, just a music hobby, like no one was making no money off music like that. I used to see him and his, what he used, the type of views he used to get. I used to think, man, my man's hard, man. But you know what I'm saying, bruv, is for niggas like us, bruv, it's just, it's never going to go where, where like who would have been a guy like say Chip or whatever, do you know what I'm saying? But it's like, so for me to see that, because I, I would have counted him out. Do you know what I'm saying? Even though he was talented and whatever, I would have thought, ah. And for me to see that bow on a TV, like, what this guy's actually fully making it, bro, that's mad. Same with uh, Section Boys. I, my, one of my soulmates was a Section Boy. Um, we was watching the Mobos, 2015. That's what I'm saying. It was something in the air around them times. 2015, man, I'm telling you. Or well, maybe it was 016, I can't remember. But, um, yeah, literally, we're watching the Mobos. His brethren's come out of the Mobos. Trapping ain't dead. My like, do you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, these, I'm looking at them like, that is me. Like, bruv, we are the same person, bro. Like, there's no Illuminati. There's mm-hmm. no, like, there's no conspiracy behind this. And your brethren sitting here with me in the can and you're on the TV, like, singing gangster music to me, bruv. Like, that's what's going on right here, innit? Like, do you know what I'm saying? So, there was no, like, I saw it, innit? So, that's, I could say, a role model, innit? 100%. So, yeah. you're saying you've seen Storms and you've seen yeah. became successful. So, this is best thing with you yeah. you could do that same thing that's exactly and what's I better I could is do exactly the same thing. he wasn't in the trouble path exactly you, you were exactly. on the trouble path exactly. you're talking about this exactly. so you can influence more people than him with your success yeah. and stop people going on the same road exactly the same way not even a couple of years later he walks out onto a big stage did ya yeah bro yeah, come on bro come you know on. the thing fam yeah, you know what I'm saying bro it's like, not even a couple like, yeah a couple yeah literally boom. after that bird it? two yeah after that bird boom straight focus bow 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 yeah, but about a year in. What was your year in? No. Nah. Huh? Two years. Two years in? Where that, bruv, and prominent in this thing, you get me? Just talk to me about how rewarding doing the right thing, positivity. No, nah, so it's... Talk like, about making your mum proud. Yeah, no, that's the main thing, innit? Because that's, that's what it's all about, do you know what I'm saying? Family and making your family proud and being a man and looking after your family and being a, an example for your younger siblings, your children. Come on. Your, you get me? Being able to be a support. That's everything. A support for your, for yeah. your, um, for your older family and your young, and, your and your community. Your, even well. your community, everything. Do, like, do, do you know what made me buzz more than anything, man? Mm. It was the fact that I was doing something that my kids were proud of and my proud kids of. could shout from the yeah. rooftops. Do you know what no, I'm saying? even that. But that's, 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 even, that's what I'm saying. Like you said, my mum, she's, Christian, yeah, so it's like, and she's like devout, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we're up getting into trouble all over these years, police running in my mum's house for robberies, murders, and like you say, it drugs, affects everything. Them. Do you know what I mean? This is madness. How can you do this to such a woman? Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, even when it came to, even though, like, I, 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 I weren't too, doing too bad on the road, that like, like, I could do stuff for my mum. Do you know what I'm saying? I was, but it was like, she would say, if this is from that, I, would, I, I don't want it. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, I would have to lie, like, nah, this is something else. Do you know what I'm saying? So she can just take it, like, but to be able to actually, with legitimate money, like, mm. do you Transfer. know what I mean, bro? Like, just, no, it's gone into your account, man. Don't watch that. Do you get it, that bro? your ass, man. Do you know what I mean? So I know how you're going to feel when you get that big yard up there, man. Do you know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, so it's like, you. it's like, that's, that's... Come with that's, the keys, innit? Come with the keys and go, yeah, there's man, not much, your little present. There's not much better feelings than that. Yeah, no, that's that um, code. I'll see you in an hour. Yeah, you know I mean, that's how it is, man. Watch, watch. Trust it's me. coming, it's coming, it's coming. I won't see nothing less. I won't Trust see me. nothing less. Trust me. Yeah, that's that's the um, that's the benefits. That's the. That's like, life, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like a proper like a man. Like a man, like a man in it. Like, man, like yeah. what? I'm a man that like. Yeah. It's like I mean, it's mad because I thought I was a man before. Even yeah, 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 do you know yeah. what I'm saying because I'm still patterning. But it's like if like if I told her the truth, like she wouldn't accept it. Do you get? That's what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? She ain't got... She ain't, it's like, you can tell people what I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my son. What? She's my son. Do you know what I mean? Nothing, there's no better feeling than that. There's, there's no, no better feeling there's than no that. There's no better feeling than that. There's no better feeling than that. And now, uh, I'll just hope and pray my older kids out. Like my, I know they deep down feel proud of me now. Do you know what I mean? But I still feel a little bit of resentment. 
but um, the younger kids. Don't worry, man. That will come. No, listen, time. listen, listen. Time, I've damaged time, them too much. That, in the, I, I know time's a healer. I, look, look, that's why I'm not emotional about. It. I know I've been emotional about. It. I, I'm, I get emotional about the pain that I've caused them. But I know where I end up. They're gonna. There's gonna like. I know when they have kids. Yeah. I'm the granddad that's yeah, yeah. from heaven. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know, I'm the granddad. Like, yeah. you ain't getting a granddad like me. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, their kids are going to be protected. They're going to be secure. They're going to be looked after. Like, do you know what I mean? And like, it's just growth, innit? So I know that's coming with my kids, but I do, and this is why I say it to the youngsters, right? Don't be resentful or revent, re resentful because of what you were. Mm. Because I resent what I was because now I'm a big man. I see the damage that mm. I've caused my kids. Mm. Do you understand? I see it, I feel it, I experience it every day. I ring my kids sometimes and I pick the phone up and that's like a stab in the heart. Do you mm. understand? But mm. that's only because of my actions. It's not their fault. Because what my dad done to me as a kid, I fucking hated him. Do you know what I mean? To the point where I pulled a strap out of him and told him, get out of my yard. First was a blade and then I pulled a strap on him. But get out of my yard, you can't come to my yard no more. Because I hated him because of the life that we led that he gave my mum. Mm. And the life that I led his mum wasn't a good life that I led her, do you know what I'm saying? So I can understand his anger and his sort of uh, mindset, but I know it will change. And when it does change, that's when I've achieved my goal. So mm. it's about now, for me, going through what I've been through, what we're preventing the youngsters from going through, yeah? I've got to go through all of this to make the wrongs right. Mm. And unless I go through what I'm going through with my son, I mean, which people don't have to go through. You don't have to go through this stuff mm. as long as you conduct yourself correctly and behave correctly mm. and you, you're responsible, mature, and a parent. Do you understand? I wasn't that. Yeah, that's what it's kid. about. It's about being a parent. That's what yeah. a lot of people don't I wasn't think a as parent. well, man. It's like I a lot of people like to put their their own, their own, like, resentments and their own like I don't know like the way they live their life onto their kids but that's not how you parent that like, do you know what I'm saying raising a child raising a child is a completely problem, different my thing, problem like. was I always thought money was what was important exactly because it's like to you yeah. it sorts out everything with every adult yeah. in the world like yeah. money I mean, but it's like so in your head you're thinking yeah it's a kid but yeah well yeah, have that for your birthday yeah. whatever yeah. that's do you know what I'm saying and that's it perfectly it right I'm in prison right mm. and as long as my kids get a thousand pound on their birthday yeah. a thousand pound Christmas yeah. and clothes whenever they need yeah. it I'm the guy yeah, not about I'm that. the guy yeah. I'm the guy well you, you go on holiday I was paying for holidays I was yeah. paying for um, presents I was Closed, whatever they wanted when I was in prison, they got it. Mm. Wherever they wanted to go on holiday, they got the money to go. Do you know I mean, their mum was a hard working person, she committed her life and her soul to her kids. And she, without her, Lisa being there, Dane and Tegan wouldn't be the kids they are today. They're really good kids, they're not criminals. They, Dane fraternized a little bit when he was a bit younger, but his mum's kept them on the straight now, and their nan Shirley's kept them sick, like in a way where they're focused. So I had nothing to do with that part. I kept my son away from crime mm. as much as I could. I mean, but I can't put back that time that I fucked up Didn't and I mean. fucked up. So this is why I do what I'm doing now. And that's why I'm glad that, um, Excellent. ambush. <laughs> I nearly said it, I nearly said it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, because this, right, I'm glad that ambush even G man. going to say my government, by the way. Yeah, because right, come on, come on, come on. Uncle, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's just, <laughs> even G man. It's even G man. Now I'm going to say that. Yeah, I got a phone call of G man's missus once, and she said she was she like, but she was happy at the man that he become. Yeah, and she was happy that the man he become. Do you know what I'm saying? And that you know what I mean? That just makes you feel. How rewarded was that compared right, to all mate, the other bullshit we did before? There's no better feeling than that. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's no better. I never. There, there wasn't anything that anybody could have done in the criminal world that would have topped that feeling that I got that day. What about what this saying? money compared? To, no, 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 no. Of no, no, course, no. it doesn't what compare to money. Making someone proud right, of good right, feelings right, right. is the fact that she was proud of him and yeah. what he was doing and what a man he was at home, mate. Mm. Do you know what? Nothing's topped that yet. Mm. Facts. Nothing's mm. topped that yet. Do you know what I'm saying? So? Yeah, and no. that's why. I'm on that journey as well though, on, with, with, my, with my daughters, innit? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I just see the world and the way it is and just like, like I just want, like I, I just try to study, innit? How to make good people, innit? Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I see a lot of people, like even, I know rich girls and that, and it's like, like you're fucked up though. Do you know what I'm saying? And, I, and it's like, why, why, why are you like that? And it's because your dad or your yeah, parents yeah. didn't pay enough attention to you. And that's or why I didn't do, do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, right. that's what I try to, that's what I try to do. Like now I try to put a lot of 
as much time as I can into her. And you know, what, you, know, you know what I find the key is, yeah? The key is, right? All I tried to do with G, man, was make him the best version of him he could be. Yeah. Right? And that's what I said to him. As long as you're the best version of you you can be, things will change. And he got himself, you know what I mean? He had a little pot belly. Do you know what I'm saying? And then next thing you know, he's ripped up and he's he's catching up. He's catching up. I, I got to the stage where I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to work even harder. Do you know what I mean? And then he had a little wobble and I was like, wicked, wicked, wicked. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And it was like, and then he got, he got back on the gym again. But it's just, it's nice to know that what you instill into someone creates so much positivity. Do you know what I mean? And it's wealth. That is wealth. Do you know what I mean? You might get rich with money. Yeah, but like they say, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. All they have is money and they're so poor. So the wealth that I feel I've instilled it, or help instill into a G-Man is something that will last forever. Do you understand? Like his daughters that's, know that's, me forever. That's wealth. That's wealth for Do you know what I mean? That is wealth. Mm. That's not being rich. That's wealth. And that's what I live for. That's part of my legacy to create wealth. Not for me. Mm. For everybody else in my environment and everybody else I come into contact with. If I can help create wealth for them, do you know what I mean? Then that is it. And that's what the legacy is all about where I'm concerned. So, mm. yeah, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, and Joey's is, look, watch this, yeah? It's amazing sitting here now. Now, if you rewind time six years, imagine I sitting around the table six years ago. It's imagine right, the conversation. Right. I'll tell them about Do you know what I mean? I'll tell them about it's that. Such, such <laughs> no, what I'm saying, I'm just, just imagine the conversation six yeah, years ago. What would we have around the table? It's such you know a change. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, what, what? Wait, 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 wait. Don't, ping, don't. ping, ping, ping. No, nah, don't do it, don't do it. Ping, <laughs> ping, 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 ping. Like, no, but that's the reality, isn't it? Like, yeah, so, no, like, we're embarrassed to even think about it, bruv. Yeah, yeah we're embarrassed to even think about the conversation yeah, we would have been having six years ago. That's so that shows the growth, and that is the wealth that I like to instill yeah. into my youngsters. Do you know what I'm saying, Joe? Yeah. And it's sick. Yeah, and if we can ripple this throughout the whole of Europe and the rest of the world, we're going clear. Do you know what I mean? And that's why G-Man is like my protege that he's going to be like the key. Do you know what I mean? When people say, well, what, what, why, why do you do this? I say, Look at that guy, look at that guy, look at that guy. Right, and all they've done was get in the gym every day, eat healthy food, train as hard as they could. Do you know I mean, I never give G-Man anything, never done anything for him. Do you know what I mean? I just said, no, 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 give him information. Uh, you might be going wrong, don't mm. listen to that. Let me give you this information, let me give you that information. Do this, do that, go this way, go that way. And bam, now he's created wealth, not just for him, but for the whole environment has got the opportunity to jump on a wealth stream. Do you know what I'm saying? So not being rich, everyone's going to be wealthy. No one's going to worry about money in 20 years' time. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. No one's going to worry about money in 20 in years' time. Right. Everybody's going to have enough, more than enough, to help others create wealth. And that's the mindset that I adopted in 2015. And that's what we've got to ripple out to all the youngsters. And I'm glad that you come on today. To no, no, come on, man. It's just, just bare love, man. And that's the beautiful thing about transition and growth. So um, I'm sure what you guys have been saying is going to resonate with a lot of people. They're going to understand, obviously, the negativity of the street stuff like this. But there's going to be a lot of people out there who are in certain situations where they feel they can't get out of. They're stuck in it. There's mm. nothing. They haven't got any legit things. They haven't got any legit influences. Mm. Everything's bad. Their elders are bad. Everything's bad. Mm. The only way they know how to make money is bad. Mm. So what would be a bit of no, advice from, saying, from even, either of you? Yeah, that even like, that's what I'm saying. Even if it's like, do you know what I mean, bro? Like you're involved. It's just about moving properly like do you know what I'm saying it's about it's just about being a man like literally like do you know what I'm man, saying it's like, what are you, like what are you doing it for like do you know what I'm saying like if you're in that position what are you doing it for like who are you helping like where are you going what's the goal where's the end goal you have to you have to figure that out for yourself do you know what I'm saying what are you trying to achieve once you figure out what you're trying to achieve then it's like you know what you'll need to do to get there innit do you know what I'm saying no every, everyone always liked what you said there because it's real hard to think of the ways to get out of it but then you like the way change you the product. Change the product. Change so the you product. don't have to change your mindset. Yeah, you change, change your product. product. That's yeah. all I've done. That's all I've done. So when I, when I speak to kids now, I don't look at um, yeah, change, yeah. Ambush and think, how, how can I make money out of him? How, I just think, how can I make him the best version of him he can be? Right? How can I make him the best version of him he can be? Mm. The same way I've done it with G-Man. Do you know what I'm saying, Jack? It weren't what I can benefit from him. That I had to go. I had to say, how can I make him the best version of him he can be so he can benefit the best that he can benefit, mm. right? And because of that, yeah, he gives me praise and he speaks very highly of me and he holds me in a high regard. That is my reward, do you understand? Now, when he looked no, back- He said like on a business, on a business perspective, yeah. so like change the, 
change the product. So like with me, like so the music in it, that's that's my product. Do you know what I'm saying? So, but I'm hustling that. Hustling your music. Like I was hustling the. Which is perfect. Do you know what I mean, bro? Like I like I didn't go sleep. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how I used to do but it. So when we was on when we was on um that yeah when book. the shows was on and that. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like. I wouldn't sleep. I'll would go to every interview, every every show, every this, Love every that. that. Do you know what I'm saying? Grinding like, like I would because when I was on the roads, like when I was doing all that, like I wouldn't I wouldn't sleep in in love of the of the of the money. Of, do you know what I'm dream. saying? So it's like of the dream of what I was trying to achieve. So it's like that's the energy. You just put that same energy into something what something else. Do you know what I'm saying? Something legit. And something you can grow, mate. But not even just grow. and not even just and it's just it's just even when you're trying to figure it out, it's like how long did you put into tra- into trying to figure out what everyone else is doing to get money on the roads? Do you know what I'm saying? 40 years I've tried. Exactly. 40 years exactly. I've how, yeah. how long? 40 years. How long was it before you even saw like it's 40 what, years you're, what, you're, what you're dealing with now? You get water in that thing. You don't get anywhere. Whereas if you get onto that positive path, everything you do, you yeah. get something back from yeah, it. Yeah, literally, like, literally. What we can look at is just look at the transition the G-Man and Buzzworld have made in the last couple of years. I was on the road for 40 years. Mm. Yeah? Now, them lot are turning over more money than I, no, I earned on the road. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I handled a lot of money, but I never earned a lot of money. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You get 10 bits of grub, that's only 10 grand profit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Then you've got to pay people to deliver it, people to look after it, people to sell it. Do you know what I'm saying? So you ain't got that much money, mm. but you've got a front like you have, because you can't say, oh, I've got 300 grand here, but I'm skinned, I can't borrow you 400 quid. Like, mm. It makes you look like a mug. So <laughs> it's all bullshit. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're not making money, mm. you're handling money, then you're getting in debt, yeah. and then you're falling out with people, and it's just a headache. Mm. So why do that? When you can build slowly, and within three to five years, you can buy your own home. Mm. Done. Yeah. That's yeah. what I say, that's what I say to people as well. Just try it, like, especially like if you've been Joe and that, yeah? And you sat down for years or however long you sat it's like try and you wasn't doing anything in that time yeah, yeah. two years you didn't do nothing yeah. so imagine you applied yourself for that same amount of and time, even the time and prior it's just to it's that. just just do it as an experiment because you didn't mind wasting your time in prison it's, it's not just the two you know years it's the time prior to that because yeah. all that time prior to that all that did is got you in jail exactly so that was time wasted you get it. As well. so, so imagine five, imagine ten. now you put two years into into something like you put all your energy into something into, that's legit that can grow. Do you know what easy way yeah. to do it? Even even if yeah, you've only got a hundred pan at the end, you've got two years worth of fuck. So, do you know what I mean? Worth of, do you know what I mean? It's like say you did this year for two years, yeah, mm. and you didn't make a penny. Mm. But by the end of them two years, everybody would know who you are. You you would have a. Um, uh, you got a CV, a portfolio, a, lot, a, a, a whole portfolio. Of, it, right? Just keep it simple. Yeah. Right? So what I do, yeah, I rewind to 2015. So all the villains who was being villains in 2015, I'll ask myself, where are they today? Yeah. And what have they been through? Yeah. Right. 35 percent of them are dead. Yeah. Yeah. 40 percent of them in prison. Yeah. And the others are chasing the pound note because they're skin. Yeah. In debt. And that's do you understand? And that's reality. Yeah. And that's, that's not the just reality. The people, you know, that's with everyone in the criminal world. So well, that's the, just the people I know. Just yeah. the people I know, which is a hell of a lot of people, bro. Jump Sancho. Like even one of my partners growing up, mate. Like Lambie, look at him back in jail, fifty years of age, bro. Yeah. He's coming out 55, 60. That was I mean, that was enjoyable. Come on, man. Like I've been with Mark forever, mm. and I begged him, two thousand fifteen. Come on, Mark. And he said, no, allow that, man, allow that. Now look at him. Do you understand? So I look at people, I look at that as a reflection. I think, look at this person, look at that person. And everybody that's been on the road, yeah? Everybody. And do you know who the biggest penultimate sort of per- purpose was, was with me, right? I used to think Charlie was a fucking idiot. Charlie Slough. Yeah. yeah. I used to think he was an idiot. I used to say to my cousin, him and my cousin are tight, yeah? So I said to my cousin, what the fuck are you hanging about with him for? Mm. Making music. Music, she ain't gonna make no money. Mm. And I had to go to him a couple of years ago and say, Charlie, man, I didn't realise, <laughs> bruv. I'm so sorry for fucking undermining you and trying to pull, because I was trying to pull my cousin away from him for years. Saying, what are you doing with him? He ain't doing nothing for you. That's stupid money. Take these 20 bits, take these 50 bits, take these 100 bits and get yourself some money. And he's like, Marv, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, what? What? Fucking idiot, take it, man. Make yourself some money. But Charlie used to tell him, don't do this, don't do that. Mark, don't do it. Don't so look, your, your cousins are not sensible, bro. And I used to work. think I used to think he was a cunt for telling him that. But now I'm about to eat my words and go and tell Charlie, Charlie, come on, son. Damn! Like, damn! Do you know what I mean? Like, and if I'd have done what Charlie was doing, I remember. Yeah, big and big and serious, though. Right, right. Big and serious. Charlie's a proper testament to that as well. No, he is. Because you could you could you can actually go and watch his whole growth. From yeah. ten years ago right. to where yeah, he is now, yeah. even longer than that, 2000, probably about 2000, fifteen years maybe. Two thousand. When, when did Charlie start being a guy? 
When was Charlie, when did Charlie get that radio show? 2006. Probably about 07, 08, innit? Right, yeah, 2006, right? Yeah. 2006, yeah. right? 2006, because me and Charlie, me and Charlie discussed this before. Yeah. Same happened with Charlie. Me and Charlie was... No, 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 no. It wasn't, it wasn't illegal. Charlie, Char, Charlie, was tied in, Char, Charlie was tied in with certain people doing yeah. certain things. And they was holding him back. Because yeah. like, he was under contract. Yeah. yeah. But me and these people had a bit of conflict. Mm. Right? And then we had a bit of a situation one day. And it was like, all right, you take them lot. Mm. And whoever wants to come with me, come with me. And there's no way. Yeah. So Charlie decided to come with us. And I said, go and get me your life, Charlie. Good luck, man. Yeah. And he's made what he's made of himself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's... His hard work, because he's always been a grafter, Charlie. Yeah. But I couldn't see what he saw yeah. back then. Yeah. I couldn't see it. Yeah. And I've, already, I've, I've told him loads of times, Charlie, I'm so fucking, sh I'm so sorry for not mm. paying attention and mm. listening. Do you know what I'm saying? Because now I regret not listening because I would have been a billionaire by now if I'd have listened to Charlie fucking 15 years mm. ago. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the problem with the roads, really, isn't it? You, can't you don't listen. You can't see it. Yeah, you, you can't you don't, see anything. You don't growth. see growth. Yeah, you you just see. need. You see what you get. No, yeah. What you get, right? Fifty key, hundred key, two hundred key. That's what I'm getting. Mm. I'm gonna make X, Y, Z. I'm yeah, gonna make X, uh, Y, Z. Right, yeah. That's the guy. What? 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 what for what? Five years to get what? Fuck that! No, I ain't doing that. I've got this. Yeah. And that was my mindset. Do you know what I mean? So I kicked myself every day for not jumping on their bandwagon back in the day and listening to my youngsters back then. Do you know what I'm saying? Because where he's come now and what he's done is phenomenal. And the fact that he pulls everybody in, do you know what I mean? With a phone call. Do you know what I'm saying? That because that's all it was. To get you walking on the stage, it was a phone call, yeah? He said, I've got him, sweet. I said, all right, lovely, done, bam, bam. He's grown, Buzzwell grown, everybody's grown. Jump Sancho. And Charlie is the penultimate guy to help the boys on the road within the music industry. And he does what he does in a phenomenal way. I mean, I've, so, I've got so much respect for Charlie for what he does and what he continues to do to help everybody. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm taking a leaf out of his book now. And now I'm on the legal product. So I'm doing what I'm doing, not with music, but with other businesses, other companies, other strategies. And I'm helping people, plugging them into other networks so they can grow into wealth as well. Mm. And that's all Charlie's done forever. Just grow, slowly, slowly, chip it away at the grow pattern. And that's all we've all got to do. Mimic that same conduct and behavior and work ethic. And that's it. You got that work ethic? Yeah, man, it's Bam. vision, man. Vision, Go. belief. Yeah, but that's why you got people like G-Man and Rams, because they're the visionaries. No, no, I'm the visionary. No, you're the musician. No, I'm the visionary. Okay, okay. I told you, I sat down, I saw it. Okay. I envisioned it. Okay. And like I you said, created it. Okay. Organizer, administrator. No, but see, you're not listening to those guys. They're the organizers, right? Yeah. right? So what I'm saying is, right, without that network, yours is always going to be an idea, bro. No, no, exactly. exactly. So, exactly. so exactly. Like, this is what I'm saying, Siobhan. That. You're, you've seen something, but who's put it together, that's the visionary. No, that's what I'm saying, that's what the team is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, so mm. you can't nick all the credit, son. I'm not nicking all the credit, I'm just saying, <laughs> it? it's the truth, isn't it, you know what I'm saying? It was my idea, bro. Yeah, no, it's not, no, no, it's, not it's, not it's your idea. It's their brains, network, work ethic and commitment. It's ours, 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 all together, together, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's One, two, played three. their part. It's a triangle. Give them their fucking mean? props. Triangle, innit? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a triangle, yeah. it's a perfect yeah, way like, to describe it. Under the key. Yeah. yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so like you say, we talk about there the hard work. And if you've got hard work and you've got a goal and it's legit, every day, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take, every day you're every going to get closer. Villain, yeah. Every villain works fucking hard. Yeah, so that, push I, their I never had enough of hard work, but the problem is man. you never get any closer to your destination exactly. because of the hurdles in the way. Exactly. And so all you're doing treading water, mm. the destination is still 100 miles away. Exactly. So if you get on that legit thing, every day you're getting closer exactly. to your goal. Exactly. Depending exactly. on how hard you work, and the guidance you get, depending mm. on how quick you get there. Exactly. And that's the only that's the only that's the only thing that can create residual income, which is wealth. Them yeah. big word there, residual yeah, like, income, right. yeah? Okay. yeah. Oh, you, you've changed. No, 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 Getting on to back onto you presently. Mm. So what's what have you got going on at the moment? Obviously you just had the album dropped, the album did yeah, unbelievably. Yeah, yeah done well. Congratulations done well. Yeah, on the success. You, so what you. what have you got going on right now? What's coming up for you? For um the next few yeah, right now we're just working, do you know what I'm saying? We've just got the whole Buzzwell thing going on. We've got about seven artists at the moment. Just working on um Should we give us some of your artists' names or so uh, try to remember them all. One three five, SP Montez, um, Frank Equa. Um, Soraya London, Seeks, Sequel Suave, 
um, Madame Molly and <coughs> Roach. <though. clears throat> who's coming? Who's coming? Two, <clears throat> two newest. Uh, and who's coming? Who's coming? Who's coming where? Come on. Uh, <laughs> a big MH. Come on, Marv's big, coming. I'm big coming Marv Herbert. Music, he's going to do my rascal. Oh, he's going to be, he's gonna music, gonna be bad man for me. You're going to hear him on the start of the tracks and that, giving it the giving it the big because we are the big and you feel me? You know what's going on, come bro. It's the key. Music shit, bro. The key ain't got a name, but it's the key, you get it? Nice, key. nice. And uh, I mentioned earlier, obviously, you had your documentary came out just a few yeah, days ago. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, making of... Yeah, and, B, brother, yeah. yeah, and uh, that's awesome. That's on your YouTube page. Can you tell people where they can reach out to them? Yeah, literally. Um, I'm um, I'm available. Where's on the YouTube page? Uh, Buzzwell ENT. That's the YouTube page. Buzzwell Insta, E-N-T, Insta, Instagram. Buzzwell ENT. And Facebook. Buzzwell. Uh, Facebook. Same thing. Snapchat. Ambush SMG. That's where they can find. Have you got? Have you got? Have you got, have you got any email yeah. addresses for any business proposals? Yeah, you well, can find that in the bio. Of my, yeah, come on. Um, of my it's, it's, about, so, yeah. it's about harnessing these business ideas that these youngsters have got on the road. Yeah. If we can elevate people through business as well, then yeah. we do that as well. Yeah, oh yeah, that's what I'm building, currently building a studio, building a big headquarters like you've got here, Marv. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, and where's that? Um, Secret well, locations. Secret locations. <laughs> London, <laughs> London. It's yeah. gonna be London. It's gonna be London, based. Secret location, obviously. Marv, I just hope. I just hope it looks as nice as my gaff. Do you know what I'm saying? Marv's gaff is very nice. You know what I'm saying we was in here for two weeks, a couple of weeks ago. Do you know what I'm saying? And then it definitely inspired um, the creative vision for the studio that we got coming. So that's gonna be like our headquarters, um, and yeah, where we make the magic. I'm literally trying to make it the hub in England, like so. It's gonna be proper. So it's like whoever and from wherever. When they come to London, they're gonna have to come to the Wise World Studio. Do you know what I'm saying? But that's what I like. So that's what um, we're dealing with. I think this has uh, been unbelievable today. So I'm thank you very much. Anything else you wanna ask me? I don't think we touched on. I I think that's been... All I wanna, all I like doing is pushing the product, change your product. You know what I mean, change your work ethic. Get in the gym, eat healthy. Yeah. That's all the only. Look, come on, man. That's it. That's all everybody's that's doing. So the only thing I can say is. I can't wait for him to be on a perfect diet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's but my it. Skin, my skin is better. My, Come on, man. My chest is looking a bit bigger. Come on, that's only G. That's only G. That's only G, man. And me. Come on, man. It's and, all and, else. And, and G, do you know what I mean? He wakes me up and that. You know Come saying? on, man. That's it. That's what it is. Eat good, train well, and live fantastic. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's all part and parcel with the same work ethic. Because if you ain't got the work ethic, you ain't going to gym. But like I say to everybody, right? If you're not prepared to put 100% effort into yourself, how could you expect anybody else to put any faith or trust in you? No, for sure. So keep it simple. Put 100% in yourself. Become the best version of you you can become. Mechanically, mentally, physically and spiritually. And you're golden. Mm-hmm. Okay, so before we go, where can people reach out to you, Marv? I'm Marvin Herbert. Marvin at themarvinherbert.com. Instagram is herbert.marvin. Facebook is Marvin Herbert. YouTube is Marvin Herbert. Subscribe, like and follow. Yeah, that way. So finally, obviously, this has been, again, nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Nothing but the truth. Boom. No cap, no cap. Come on, come on. And let's...